Hello, folks. Welcome to the Manly Pinterest Tip Show. I'm Jeff C., and you're not. I'm very excited for you guys to be on the show today. I've got uh, a real special guest here for you. Um, you guys may know that I launched the Manly Pinterest Tips podcast, and if, I'd love for you guys to head over to iTunes and subscribe, rate, and review that. That would help me out a ton. But during the process, I gave away a Kindle Fire HD and a $50 gift certificate to Amazon, and the person who who won that was Rob Russo. And getting you know all the shipping down and everything like that, I got to talking with him, and he's a really interesting guy. And so I thought it'd be great to have him on the show. And um, so here, let me tell you a little bit about Rob. He's a professional graphic designer that recently escaped the corporate cubicle. He has a slight, just a slight, obsession with guacamole, which fueled his recent startup, Avocado Shirt Company. And his partner and creative director of his latest business venture, Hagaruso, a strategic marketing firm. He combines his love for design and social media to teach entrepreneurs, social managers, and small business owners the value of visual marketing. He's vowing to get back to blogging and is preparing his first soon-to-be-released online training program. He's a proud husband, a dad, and chicken farmer. Rob enjoys spending time with his family on their homestead where they grow, hunt, and process their own food. Rob, thanks so much for joining us here today. Hey, good to be here. It's Exciting, huh? So, yeah. how's the Kindle Fire? I want to know how that. Do you like it? I mean, I've I never. Had I've never had a Kindle before, um, but I just got it. I think it was Monday, and I've been playing with it off and on this week. And uh, excited. I, one of my goals was to read more books, and I just never seemed to finish. I used to read all the time when I was a kid, and just with everything else going on, life and all that, I just don't make that a priority. But Started downloaded something and started reading, and I just you know it's like easier. You got it right there, and I'm excited. So thank you for that. <laughs> very cool, very cool. Well, I wanted to ask you um, in your bio. I thought it was very interesting. You said that you grow, hunt, and process your own food. Now, what does that exactly mean? Uh, well, just uh, less than a year ago, we moved out. I guess the country you call it, and uh, we have about 11 acres. And it's more. I'm mar I'm more married into this. My wife grew up, her family hunting and fishing and all of that, and. So now we look out our window and you just see like a, you know some several deer run by. Uh, so when deer season is in, uh, you just kind of step out and <laughs> take your pick kind of thing. And again, my favorite story: my wife was cooking dinner, and this was last a uh, year ago, last fall or whatever. That uh, I think I was still on the way home from a meeting or something like that. She's just cooking dinner. The kids were playing, and um, she saw a deer out there, so she <laughs> grabbed the rifle and ran out. So I got home, and so just processed. I got the you know, cut it up, you skip the butcher and all of that, you just cut it up, put it in the freezer or whatever, and you try to eat fresh and, uh, you know, literally. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing really more fresher than going out of your, your house and, and shooting right. your dinner. So exactly. that's pretty, that, that is really cool. Because, you know, I mean, we talked about this a little bit in, in the green room that I'm a beekeeper, so right. you're not going to have to connect and, you know, get you some going on some bees because that's, uh, that's what I do. I don't know, I, I my neighbors might be a little nervous if I get out of there and start <laughs> shooting things, so... <laughs> But that's that's really awesome. Very cool. Well, you know, the reason one of the reasons that, you know, kind of was intriguing to talk to you was that you went through for your new startup, this Avocado Shirt Company, um, a Kickstarter campaign. Can you kind of first tell us what Avocado Shirt Company is, how it started, and uh, how it got into this Kickstarter thing? Yeah, I was just well, I started working with my buddy and we have been running a local marketing advertising firm. So, you know, we're just uh, doing website design, all of that, taking care of the customers. and uh, But I just had this idea, and it's like, I, I don't know if it would fit under, you know, that umbrella. So it's like, maybe we try something new. I was like, I just texted him. I was like, would you wear a guacamole T-shirt? And he was like, uh, I, yeah. Or, or maybe I started out, do you even like guacamole? This is back when, you know, right. still filling out people. You either love it or hate it, but... So I just had this idea, you know, it's like I, I liken it to people that love coffee. You know, you see all the things going around on Facebook every day or every, Pinterest, Instagram, everywhere. Don't talk to me until I've had my first cup. You know, so it's like you either love it or hate it, and those that love coffee are all over it. They got their, you know, everything coffee. So I thought this is the same. If you love guacamole, you'd probably wear that. <laughs> so um, I just thought, but maybe I'm crazy, you know, maybe. And so uh, maybe it wouldn't sell. So before we you know, filled up the warehouse, spent all our money on guac t-shirts, and then that wouldn't sell, that's the idea of, you know, Kickstarter, you put an idea out there and see if you can get the supporters beforehand. Wow. So, this you did the Kickstarter thing, just trying to try to see if it was a good idea, and then it kind of just took off from there? 
yeah, we're coming up on our the first year, I guess. Uh, we we set it up when we decided to do it. It was January of last year, so it was it January 2014 is when I first had the idea. And the end of talking, we figured, okay, we'll try to launch or whatever the end goal of May 5th, you know, Cinco de Mayo, tie that in. So then working right. backwards, we just reading up on a lot of what Kickstarter themselves suggests around the 30-day campaign is best. So we just kind of did the math. April will be the campaign. March, we'll try to, you know, say, hey, this is coming. But I think I got excited. And February, by February, we were signed up on all the, you know, uh, social media channels and just started saying, hey, this is coming started gathering the tribe of uh, guac lovers and just to see where it would go. So. Wow. So um, so you set up the campaign, you, you got a response, and then did you decide, okay, this is kind of a real company, we need to, you know, go on? Or, or was it like, I mean, I would get, you know, overwhelmed, okay, because I think you, if I remember right, you got actually more money than you actually asked for in your campaign, is that right? Right, right, and we tried to, and I don't even remember the exact amount, I should have looked up, we, uh, the Kickstarter, they keep the links up for your unique campaign, you know, all the time, so there's still the live, you know, link or whatever, and it'll say there what we hit, and we just, you know, these days you can go down and, or online, you can print one shirt, you know, yourself. Uh, right. and we worked with local printers, and still, they could just print a couple, but obviously you get a price break, so we just kind of did a figure of maybe, you know, what amount do we need to sell, to, you know, make it kind of worthwhile. So we came up with a figure and just figured, again, to see where it goes, the initial, if we make the fund or the, the amount of going Kickstarter, that would pay for, you know, the initial run of all the shirts and a few extra and with a little wiggle room there. So um, we just kind of, let's see how it goes. And then, you know, it started gaining some speed and we were, like, and I guess surprised, you know, kind of like didn't know, right? But as it started... Right. The support came in, and we're like, okay, maybe we're onto something. And so it really it was kind of addicting to watch uh, when you're when the campaign is on. Like, if you do do this, I will say that you know you have to have the time and kind of you know not 24/7 like you're staring at it, but you've got to be there. People ask questions, and you want to be promoting it again, you know, without spamming. But all, again, all the social media channels, however you can, and just kind of like it's exciting to say, oh, we've got another, you know, whatever. And then you we're counting down, you know, and there's always something to talk about, and it's just a lot of you know stuff going on and we didn't like go viral by any means like that potato salad guy if, we rem if you guys remember <laughs> we did this before but the potato salad guy but uh, then that just kind of took off and he was on the morning show and everywhere else so we weren't to those standards but we did get uh, interviewed by our local paper and uh, so that was a big when that article hit a couple days before we hit you know the before the end of the campaign that's really what pushed us over and then it kind of kept trickling in until the end but and then we just said, yeah, we'll set up a site, obviously, and we'll, you know, put up what we've got, and, uh, and again, just kind of <laughs> see how it goes again. So, so you didn't when you had the uh, Kickstarter campaign, you didn't even have a website or anything. You just pretty much right. just had the, the, okay, okay. I put a landing landing page up, and kind of say just to you know claim the domain and put the landing page up, and where they could sign up for an email list, you know, again. But we were focused on getting the word out on social, driving people to the Kickstarter, you know, campaign and the Kickstarter it itself. And um, it really, it wasn't, I think we just kind of drifted through summer. Again, this kind of was, we were funded in May. We drifted through summer and it wasn't until, I think it was September. We, well, it's National Guacamole Day is in December, or it's September. Yeah. So in end of August, I was like, you know, what are we stalling for? Well, let's get this site up. So I was like, in time for, you know, National Guacamole Day. So we put the site up and had a sale for that, and that was that was fun too. So, awesome. So, um, would you recommend like for a, a business? And it seems like you were almost using it kind of an exploratory way, saying, "Okay, was this a good idea to do?" Would you recommend for a, like a small business if they're thinking about doing something, recommending Kickstarter, or was it? Uh, I mean, was it a good experience, or what would what would you say if somebody asked you, "Hey, should I do this?" Uh, well, obviously we got funded, so uh, you know it was a good experience. And obviously right. there's the percentage that don't. But I think, uh, yeah, I mean, there. I think it probably depends on the business. But I'm sure at least Kickstarter folks would tell you. Then yeah, I mean, pretty much anything could go there. I mean, I know they have like a huge amount of restaurant. Like maybe every local business it wouldn't work, but restaurants have gone on there and have they've gotten funds to you know start up a restaurant. And obviously that's probably very you know you got your local get your local town support and all of that, but I don't know if it was Kickstarter themselves or somebody else they put together. I just saw not too long ago, like it was like a guide, all the restaurants that were funded, 
Uh, and so if you're traveling kind of thing, make sure you mm. eat at a Kickstarter, you know, started or whatever restaurant. So I would I would think to most, you know, to some extent, if not all, then yeah, you could um, explore and it would right. be something for everyone. Was there a bunch of upfront? I don't. I haven't done a Kickstarter campaign, so I'm not not sure how it exactly works. Was there a bunch of upfront costs, or was it pretty uh, reasonable for somebody to try out an idea with? No, I don't. I don't think there's any. Again, they take a little small percentage at the end, just like if you you know charge something on PayPal or whatever. You know, PayPal takes a little bit, and just. But again, you don't. The folks aren't charged. The supporters, unless you on Kickstarter now, you don't get your money, and nobody's charged until the end when you've met the goal. Now there's other uh, crowdfunding sites out there that you can put a big goal, but you keep everything. So you get it. Just, there's others, and I don't. I'm not the expert on all of them, but sure. this is something you're going to try. Obviously, look into things like that. But again, you're not out anything really except your time. Or again, that's the idea with this. You know, we have the physical T-shirts. We printed off some samples. But again, we didn't have the whole warehouse full of them mm. to get stuck with, unless or until we knew we could sell them. So that's that's the good thing. If you have some sort of something new or something that potentially would have a lot of and you know money, you instead of putting it in there, just kind of do whatever you can, demo wise or whatever at the start, just to get your idea out there and then you know, see where it goes. Awesome. And so I think you also used, a, I think most all the Kickstarters do, but you had a video that you shot with your partner. That you put right. up there, and that was what you were asking for your whole campaign for. Gotcha. Okay. Right. Um, I want to pull up this comment real quick um, by Elisa. She goes, "I can't believe I missed National Guacamole Day." Well, I didn't even know there was one, so that was. Right. It's guacamole is good every day, right, Rob? Exactly. So that's yeah. I didn't either. There's actually a National Spicy Guacamole Day, and there's all kinds. I mean, but like I say, guacamole is good every day. So haven't got tired of it yet. So we celebrate every day around here. Gotcha. Well, you know, and the one of the things where I, I really noticed you, a social network I really noticed you on, was Instagram. And I know you got uh, some exposure with, uh, we've talked about Sue B. Zimmerman, who's, you know, the Instagal. Um, can you kind of tell how that happened, how you got kind of involved with her and just what happened with your experience that way? Yeah, again, uh, just when you have an idea of what, just getting started, I would suggest, obviously, uh, you have a unique name or whatever it is, and lock out you know all your profiles across the board. You know, and if you're one or two, we're, in our case, we're two people. You know, we have other had other things going on, so it wasn't like we could talk avocados all day. Although I could, <laughs> but and you're not going to be able to keep up with you know, that's again, Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, you know, all of the Google Plus, right? They're everywhere, and you know, sign up for the profiles for everything. But you just kind of we've I just kind of felt it out and and see so early on. Uh, we just kind of, I don't Instagram seemed to kind of take off, and then Sue contacted us, I believe. I was, I was trying to figure out how we first met, but she just, she loves avocados and uh, guacamole, and she was seeing what we were doing, and she was preparing for her first uh, creative live show, uh, or training, and she kind of just showcased us on that one, and I don't even know, I think she may have given me a heads up, I didn't know, and then she did a second one on how to sell with Insta on Instagram, and she uh, showed some of our products, and I was actually, just like I'm talking to you, you know, uh, mm -hmm. She had me dial in live, and so that was all, that was a fun experience. And so Instagram kind of took off. So kind of float around to, depending on the the occasion. Um, hopping in, to, you know, on Twitter today or Facebook tomorrow. You know what I mean? Kind of be everywhere, but uh, wherever the uh, case may be. So I've got a got a pin a little, pin a bunch right now because we're talking Pinterest. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Well, uh, here's a here's a good question, and I think I know the answer to this, but I'm going to pull it up. It's from Lee uh, Rickler, and he says. I might have missed it, but why did you need to kickstart need a kickstart to start a T-shirt company? It's fairly easy to set up a basic website, take pre-orders, then go out and get the kit. I think I know the answer, but I would like to know, you know, why exactly did you do a Kickstarter? And I th well, I think yeah, you could do what uh, what he suggested, and there's other other companies that just specialize. I think Teespring.com is one that it's kind of like Kickstarter, but just for T-shirts. And there's several others out there, you know, focused on T tees and and and, and the like, but. I just I hadn't personally um, had a campaign on Kickstarter before my own project, but I kind of played around with it and supported other, and I just kind of like the community. So that was one thing um, that again we got a lot of local support and the friends we know, obviously talking about it on Facebook and everywhere. But there was folks just that love Kickstarter and hang out on Kickstarter, and whether they they give us a dollar, you know, or five dollars, they just kind of encourage this whole startup economy. I think. And so there's that. You got the community, and then people. There's other 
spinoffs that people have started their own websites or Twitter accounts that basically tweet about Kickstarter projects all day. So we got some promotion there. So I think, again, it's just, again, getting your name out there, right? You're, it's like how why we have to be on social media because that's where everybody is. It's right. Nobody's going to just out of, wake up one day and type in avocadoshirtco.com, um, <laughs> but they're hanging out on Facebook and everywhere else. Just like So there's more people already on Kickstarter, <laughs> so we figured try to get some traction and make a name for ourselves there. That's a good. That's a good point that you went with where the community was at, and you were familiar with it. And so, you know, I was, because I I was one of the first um, Kickstarters for Pebble. You remember the Pebble Watch, you know? Right. The, yeah. And so, uh, yeah, I, there is there's a huge community there. People are talking back and forth, and that's a good point. Is going where one you're knowledgeable, and plus, it, I just think it's a good way just to test some stuff. I mean, right. you know, it could have not got funded, and you'd been okay. Nobody wants to buy an avocado shirt. Right. You know, so. Exactly. So, um, okay, your com- your company, your campaign was funded, and what's your what was your next step? I mean, you put up a website. Now, is it just you're trying to make sales? Is that what's kind of top of mind right now? I mean, obviously, yeah. You wanna we're gonna sell T-shirts and and things, but and you know, you, you when you're hanging out on social and the today's marketing. I mean, I, I don't. I'm sure everyone listening probably knows you. You don't sit up there and like buy my shirt, buy my shirt, buy my shirt. So obviously. Again, we've got this tribe of folks that love guacamole and avocados, and we so you know what, where does that go? So on Pinterest, we share you know guacamole recipes or anything with avocado. On Instagram, we share or regram a lot of people. You know everybody that if you, again you love if you're on Instagram, you probably have taken a picture of your food. <laughs> the foodies love that, and if again if you like guacamole, then you've probably taken a picture of some guacamole you've made or whatever restaurant your favorite. And so we kind of re uh, grant or what do you call it, repost and mm-hmm. give them credit, you know, tag them in Instagram or wherever, and Twitter again, all of the above, and just kind of reshare. Uh, again, the, I don't know. If you like avocados, it's how many avocados? They all look the same. You cut them open, you know, they're green and the little brown pit or whatever inside, but you just put that picture up there and people like it and talk about it. They're like, now i got to go have some guac. So we're doing a lot of that, just sharing pictures of, you know, avocados. <laughs> well, and, I think, uh, you know, it's it's like your thing about coffee, you know. Um, right. People are passionate about coffee, and if you touch on something that people are passionate about, I just think you know that's your niche. And and you successfully saw that people wanted avocado T-shirts, you know, and they're selling. And so I just think it's awesome. Um, the other question I wanted to ask you, um, just kind of you know, like I said, I saw you on Instagram. Um, that's kind of where I first noticed you. Is there a, a certain visual marketing strategy that you're doing? I mean. Is there something that you're you're always trying to do? I mean, you mentioned putting a picture of gua, gua, uh, guacamole. Do you do that in every post? I mean, what's kind of your visual marketing strategy? Well, as you mentioned, I'm a designer, and we said we have you know, in a marketing firm here, so got that whole always marketing in the back of my mind. So we kind of uh, started with that. You know, of course, as a designer, I had to design the logo. And I'm not saying if you're starting something and you don't. If you're not a designer, if you don't have those resources, you know, if you have 500 bucks to start a business, don't go for a $500 logo, and there goes all your money. You're going to need money for other things. And you know, in the day, if people don't like guacamole, then it doesn't matter if we have a logo or a T-shirt. Uh, you know, so find what works first, and then kind of build out. But obviously, I had the resources and the time, so I, you know, built the logo out. And again, I try to simplify things. My one of my what I tell clients and folks is like, pick one color. You know, and so obviously we started with green because avocados. And yeah. as you if you scroll through whatever our feeds of any anywhere, it's there's a lot of green going on. So start with that. So there's that. Uh, it's something that I know Sue Sue mentioned on Instagram. It's just kind of like a, a sea of green. Um, so you just kind of uh, start to you know stick out and in, in people's minds that they start to you know now my friends now say if they see something about guacamole or avocados, they think of me. And then you know the next step is maybe every time you see something green, you know you think, oh, guacamole is green. I don't know. So start with that. I designed a little, uh, a little our little icon. It's like half an avocado or whatever. So we kind of put that, you know, most places, and you know just kind of pick a font, you know, stick with that. So having a, a consistent look from the beginning and just kind of carry that out. Well, where do you go? Because I know I have my own secret sources. Um, and he's probably watching Dustin Stout's in the private yeah. audience. But uh, where do you go for um, you kind of your inspiration? Like, um, where do you come up for ideas for new designs? Because you know, 
you know, people are always like, how can you talk about Pinterest all the time? Well, there's different things. I mean, it's the same thing. How can you talk about? There's only so much you can do with avocados, Rob. I mean, what? Where's the end game on that? And so, where do you go to get like new ideas and, and inspired uh, for your designs? Uh, it's basically yeah, just everywhere. Even like Pinterest, you know, uh, Google Images or anything. What are people are talking about on Facebook to just your pins on Pinterest and like we've already mentioned the coffee thing. I mean, if you see whatever, a new pin of some pillow or another t-shirt or coffee mug and it says, I don't know, I love chihuahuas or, you know, chihuahuas are big mm -hmm. way back, Taco Bell kind of thing. I mean, you know, whatever yeah. it is at the moment uh, or even just, uh, you know, people going rock on and whatever, let's rock out. And then I think, well, let's just change that to guac out, right? Or, <laughs> or you know, uh, so it's just, I'm always thinking something avocado, something guacamole, and I just kind of either put that in place of the, another uh, trend or just kind of force it where I can, you know, where it makes sense. Right. So you guys, you kind of have a niche market, um, very niche, avocado. So, um, and your customers are super passionate about avocados. Yeah. Where do you go to find those? I mean, are you searching hashtags? Where are you, let's say, uh, as a small business, I'm starting out and I have a niche product. Where's the best way to find information on that niche? Is there is there some tips that you can give us? Uh, that's, well, right, you mentioned hashtag. That's a great strategy, you know, on uh, at least on Instagram and I guess Twitter and uh, wherever people are hashtagging these days. But yeah, like on Instagram, if we are pretty much hashtag avocado and guacamole on everything and it's like instant likes just because people are, you know, searching guacamole. And, and then uh, we came up with a guac gear, so hashtag guac gear. So we've got the gear. We love guac. So that's kind of our own that we've adopted. And so we kind of try to put that out there too. So, uh, But basically, yeah, Twitter, I think there's some people have set up like a almost like a bot thing. I don't know if that's a good or bad mm -hmm. thing. Like There's like a guac bot. But if I mention guacamole, it basically retweets just, you know, automatically. So whoever those people are out there, thank you. But <laughs> um, And again, just, again, taking advantage of uh, current events or what's going on. I mean, we just finished up, you know, Super Bowl. So if anybody noticed, the uh, avocados from Mexico had a commercial. Mm -hmm. So it just kind of not taken away from there, not that we can compete with them, so to speak, but we tagged, they were kind of on their coattails, just they're the first fruit. You know, so avocados are fruit, If uh, a quick fact if you didn't know that, but uh, they're the first fruit to have a commercial on the Super Bowl. So uh, big money for guac. And uh, so we kind of like, you know, showcased, their tweets, retweeted their tweets, or you know, repinned their pins, and they have the video on you or their commercials on YouTube. So of course, we shared that, commented there, those things. You know, again, not spammy like buy my shirt, but I'm commenting as Avocado Shirt Co. And I talk about guacamole or whatever it is, but people, you know, see Avocado Shirt Co. over time, and then hey, I didn't know about you guys, and then follow us. You know, it goes from there. So. Gotcha. Yeah, I think that's the key for anybody starting out is not to be spammy. Is that right. you know. Yet you're sharing other people's stuff, and you're just, you know, you're not buy my shirt, or because there's a lot of I see on Instagram is like, hey, great post, hey, right. come buy my multi-level marketing, you know, right. whatever. And so that's not what you want to do. You want to add, you know, add some discussion, add some context, and just, you know, hey, here's my hashtag or or whatever. So good point. Um, how often do you like post on Instagram? Do you have a certain amount? Do you say I'm going to post X amount of times a week, X amount of times a day? What's kind of your strategy that way? And again, it kind of comes and goes. Uh, when when I'm on it, you know, it's like daily or a couple times a day if we're talking Instagram. But uh, uh, we, like I have my own, you know, personal Instagram account. Uh, but, you know, it's basically, it's all on the phone. And at least I don't know of other ways to, I think you basically have to update. Or that, that's the best way, you know, they keep their, you know, you can go on, online on, and post other places. But Instagram, pretty much it's to be with the phone uh, for now. But you can only be logged in, I think, for in one account. So I was, I've been logged in as Avocado Shirko so long that I can't remember. <laughs> I've had to reset the password. It won't like. It's like, sorry, we don't know you. My my personal account. So trying to figure that one out. But um, so basically, and like I said, if I'm somewhere or if I'm just scrolling through Instagram and I see somebody else post guacamole, I'll take like a screenshot or remember that, and then a day later or a week later, I'll repost it and be like, thanks for the. And this is our Avo pick, whatever you know, avocado pick of the day kind of thing. So uh, it's just when the mood strikes or, again, if it, if like Cinco de Mayo, that kind of, you know, obviously, if, if the season is there, the time is there, then I try to be all over it, you know. Gotcha. So. 
Well, here, I think this has happened for a lot of people. Dustin Stout says, I don't know about everyone else watching this, but I really want some guac right about now. Thankfully, my wife made some fresh last night along with some homemade taquitos. So we're yeah. all heading over to Dustin's house after the show. Exactly. Um, well, let's talk a little bit about, I mean, you're a designer, and, you know, your whole shirt, I mean, you're a t-shirt company, so your your whole philosophy run, goes around this. Um, you know, visual branding, and, you know, everyone's talking about the visual web right now, and everything's moving that direction. Do you think it's moving that way? I mean, are you kind of aligning yourself as a company to move in that direction? Uh, yeah, obviously, uh, or absolutely, I should say. It's. Uh, I think it started as images, right, but then quickly went to video, and now it's just whatever, combo of the two. I mean, uh, we've seen, all seen the, oh, there's the old who said it back in the day about a picture says a thousand words. I mean, that's the famous quote. I should have, who said that? But, uh, and now the stats we know from, you see every day on whether it's Twitter or uh, something, you know, once you could start putting pictures on uh, your tweets, we know that those are more likely to get retweeted. And then obviously you have Instagram and Pinterest uh, that are, mainly about the image or and obviously you could put you know video in there too so I think uh, yeah again however you can you get, you get, maybe we just need to hire some people to walk around walk around wearing some shirts and maybe they're doing something else altogether but you know they're they're share their we've encouraged like you know folks that we kind of put a little thing in with a shirt order or whatever that says hashtag walk here you know, again uh, take a selfie or whatever and Tell us, how, you know, about your, you know, how you like our stuff or whatever. So, getting them to, you know, throw out their pictures or videos or whatever, and so that's always good. So again, I think, and, and as more and more people get their smartphones out, you know, we're just like walking around right there with, it's some people. I still like to read long form blog posts, have a time and place. You know, everybody got the Kindle. Remember, I'm I'm reading more. Right. But for the quick, you know, I think we just we're all visual people. Right. So. Well, that, your point there with the hashtag and when you send out your product saying, hey, take a picture, I think that user generation, user generated content is key because, I mean, that's what we actually did with um, when you won the Kindle. I said, hey, will you please take a picture of yourself that I could share out on my channels and then people like that. And so I think, and I see a lot more companies uh, doing that. Um, I know you're a designer kind of in your area. Are you seeing a lot more requests and more work coming into that kind of area of like, hey, I need help creating designs or help getting kind of a visual brand going? Are you seeing that? I think so, and if, uh, or if they, even if they don't know that they need it, then we're you know, obviously there to educate that, you know, you definitely, this is the direction we need to be going. So even if, again, you could be a local, I don't know what, down the, you know, whatever local company down the road, and it's, you know, why not have a YouTube channel, have, you know, again, be all over social. Um, that's where we're hanging out, that's, we're interacting most likely before we get to your business, so uh, you got to be there. You got to be and be visual. So. Gotcha. Well, here's uh, this is from uh, my audience is so cool. This is from Martin uh, Bierman. He goes, "The expression 'Use a picture; it's worth a thousand words' appeared in a 1911 newspaper article quoting newspaper editor Arthur Brisbane discussing journalism and publicity." Thank you, Martin. Yes. You're awesome. I think I've found that on Wikipedia before. I just uh, yes, that looks familiar. Thank you. <laughs> Very cool. Um, do you, small business coming to you, he's they're wanting to increase their visual marketing. What's the first thing that you would tell them to do? I would uh, set them up, either work with them or do it for them. You know, set up a, a look. Like I said, with with us, we started it just as basic as the color green, and then if it's whether it's a little icon or you know it might not be a logo to start, but you know something, then picking your fonts. You know, keep it simple and have that set up before. So then when you go to, you know, whether you're designing your own pen and, you know, and you're adding some type or whatever, you it might just be a green background or it might be a big bowl of guacamole. You know, I'm always thinking green and then, you know, have a go-to font and it's it basically set up a template first so you're not starting from scratch looking at a white screen when you're like, what are we going to post today? Right. Gotcha. So you kind of, you help, well, you would help them set up kind of a style sheet or a theme guide or something right. like that to get started. Good idea. So what are as your designer as what are your favorite design tools? I mean everybody has their own. What is what are some of your favorite ones? Well, I mean I've used Photoshop for years, you know, so I've, it's kind of overkill for a lot of what we do now. And um, but I've, I've used it for so long, it's it's probably open every day on my computer. But obviously with Canva, I mean I think that's if you haven't heard of Canva, you're probably crawling out from under a rock right now. 
so I, when that first came out, I'm like, oh no, I'm out of a job, right? You know, it's people are going to design their own graphics, but uh, there's still, a, I think, a, a place to play there and help others. And again, they're talking about starting with this style guide, this template. I've, for some folks, I've created like, you know, your your basic background, I guess, image. Then they could then upload that into Canva, and then maybe it's a quote graphic. So we've got our green background with a little avocado dude, and that's the background, right? And then uh, you got your hashtag Rocky or whatever up already there. Then you plop that in, and then you add your quote of the day or whatever on top of that in Canva, and that's something that you know non-designers obviously could do easy. So, gotcha. again, you've not been under a rock, but if you have, check out Canva. <laughs> yeah, um, and you can use them together because I, I actually use right. Canva and Photoshop. Just sometimes it's faster to get a template thrown up in Canva, but right. Photoshop you can do some more things with layers and stuff. So I think there's a place for both. Um, Visual, import, uh, visual branding is very important for small businesses, uh, and you guys had a great look starting out. I mean, you're a designer. You had that going for you when you first started. You know, I, and this is my opinion, but I see a lot of brands or even products launch too soon. Um, do you think that you need to have all your visuals in place before you launch? Uh, not necessarily, and again, it might depend on what you're doing, you know, what... Um your, what niche you're in or whatever and what you're actually, your product or your service. If you're a writer and a blogger, then a theme and a site and, you know, your blog look it could obviously be important and you don't want to write in a tiny font or have zero contrast that's hard to read, but you're, you're a writer, so obviously your words are important. So I would say throw up a blog and start writing, you know, but if you're... Again, I, I didn't say you had to have a logo or don't use your last dollar for a logo on something that's just launching because it could, you know, it could die next week and you don't want to spend your last penny on a logo. But again, depending on what it is, again, we're selling t-shirts, so we felt like we had to have some sample tees and some sample designs. Obviously, we threw them up there and you, people want to see that. I think it's easier. Again, we're talking about it's the visual thing. If, uh, if you see it, I think it's easier to imagine, in this case, a t-shirt that I want to wear. So. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, mainly Pinterest tip show. How do you use Pinterest in your visual marketing strategy? Again, we may have kind of touched on all of this again. So, but starting out, or starting out, of course, I created a, a Guac Gear uh, board and started pinning our, you know, our tees. Uh, but even beyond or within that, I mean, we kind of created the Guac Gear hashtag. I believe we did. Uh, but I've from Etsy to whatever else I find, you know, people are making little. Little what are they like crocheting like little avocados and selling on Etsy? So like yeah. I will pin that under, and I'm not claiming that I did it. Obviously, I right. just want to be like you said, the resource of all things avocado guacamole. So come to our guac gear board, and you know everything there is not us, obviously, but we're sharing the love of guac. You know, so sharing all these products. I guess you say people make little guacamole or little avocado earrings, and you know it's crazy what's out there. So. Share all of that, and then obviously, if we come up with a new shirt design or whatever, post that in there too. So we're kind of mixed in, but again, it's not just the board of our T-shirts. And then we have another board that is the best guacamole recipe. So always on the search for that and willing to try new things. Some people, for example, must put tomatoes in. Others say, that's blasphemy. Do not put tomatoes in guacamole. So again, within the guacamole community or whatever, <laughs> there is differences. So we're always... Uh, you throw corn in, roasted corn in there, whatever. So we try to pin several guacamole recipes. And then, again, now there's avocado toast. That's trendy right now. Uh, wrap bacon around. Have you seen that? Cut the slices of avocado, wrap bacon around it, and that's another one, bacon, right? Yeah. If you don't love coffee, uh, and you don't love guacamole, you probably like bacon. I mean, it's got to be... So you got to have something good in your life. Right. Yeah. You combine those. I mean, mm, look out. <laughs> the, I, well, I, you know, I did not know that there was a big tomato and guac controversy. So, see, I learned something. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard it both ways. So. Okay, well, down down south, we usually put, uh, at least in my area, there's usually tomatoes in it, but that's just me. So, right. um, anyway, very that's very interesting. So, th I think the key point that you're saying in that is, and a lot of people I see get this wrong, is they just pin their products or they just mm -hmm. pin their, you know, whatever their service they're offering. And so I think you are becoming a reference and a resource for all things guacamole. Like you said, right. products that link to other things, you know, um, but recipes, which everyone knows is huge on Pinterest. And so people are going to pin, oh, that's a great-looking recipe. They see it came from you. 
oh, oh, they're selling T-shirts too. I, I need to get Uncle Joe, who loves guaca, right. a T-shirt for Christmas. And so I think that's a genius way of doing it because, you know, you're not looking spammy, but they can still find your stuff. And, yeah, I think that's a big takeaway for business when you first start out is not just to constantly pin <laughs> your products because you it just doesn't look good. So Exactly. And I think in this day there's... Uh, you know, it may be less competition. I mean, yes, competition. If there's, if you're selling, well, maybe you want to start selling guacamole t-shirts. I mean, obviously that's like direct competition to us. But we found again, if you like everything avocado, there's there's this tribe here. So we found that collaboration works better than competition. So we, you know, teamed up with and actually some folks. I don't know if I should. I'm allowed to name drop, but like avocados from Mexico, holy guacamole, some of the California Avocado Commission. We've talked to folks in and among the, those uh, those uh, companies or whatever organizations, and I think somebody from California either knows somebody that works on the California Avocado Commission. They uh, called us last week and ordered a shirt, so you know that's there. And we're kind of again getting our name out still to those folks, uh, people in California or wherever the in Mexico, those avocado farms. You know, they'll like when they find out we're in West Virginia, they're like and. You know, like they don't get it's a disconnect, and like, why do you? Why, why are you talking avocados? Because obviously, we don't have the climate here to grow them. But right. hey, we can run down to the big box grocery store and still get our avocados. Um, so we love them, and why not uh, do what we can so we can make t-shirts? That's very cool. Well, I think that's a good another good point you brought up too is, you know, a lot of times businesses they don't want to collaborate with other ones that may be in their niche or things like like. Like for me, Cynthia Sanchez talks about Pinterest. Vincent Ng talks about Pinterest. I've had all of them on my show because there's enough business to go around. You know, yeah. you know, you and Dustin are both designers, but you could be on a show and talk about it, and you wouldn't really be competing against each other because there's enough business to go around. And so, right. having that idea of when you start a business or start a brand or something, that seeing who can I grow my audience with or partner with or something like that, I think that is also key, and a lot of times is overlooked. So. Exactly. Um, do you think that people are actually finding your products through Pinterest? Do you, are you seeing some sales come in through Pinterest? Uh, I haven't put any, I don't know, I guess there's metrics. I should get better at right. those type of things. I haven't dug deep into the metrics of a lot of things, but we do know, like, again, I'm talking to you today, you know, maybe tomorrow a sale will pop up that you kind of can, oh, they must have heard of, you know what I mean. So, again, right. we're t when we're, wherever we're talking or whatever we're doing, that you can kind of see the sales kind of, spike or whatever. So I think, gotcha. again, they might find us first because we pinned that best guacamole recipe, but again, they kind of then follow us or, and then again, eventually, if not right then, they're kind of becoming part, you know, becoming friends or whatever, followers, and uh, one day they'll there be like, I do need a t-shirt, and they will remember us. <laughs> That's cool. Um, so are you guys planning on expanding, and I know you have some things, but uh, to other products besides t-shirts? I think, yeah, we with the I have pins here or little buttons, I guess. I can I don't know if I can show them if you're watching, yeah. if you're listening, you can just imagine. Uh, that was a set of three. We had little buttons and then we had stickers that was again of our little avocado icon there. That those were included in the original uh, Kickstarter. That if you got a shirt, we threw in uh, buttons and uh, the sticker for everybody. But then again, we had a you might just donate five bucks or whatever the lower level was that you know we send out a send out a sticker. Um, so we and we saw some of those that you know that were selling. So, but yeah, we're. I'm thinking might be like aprons. You know, I don't know, right? So maybe you need an apron when you're preparing your your fresh guac. So there's the obvious things like that, and then there's the maybe not so obvious that I don't know. Anything goes. We're we're entertaining all kinds of ideas. Uh, okay, that was my, yeah. That was my next question. Are you guys um, are you going to continue? Are you like thinking of new ideas for new? T-shirt designs, or are you? What's the what kind of the next step for your business? Uh, just yeah, we're still we're we're open to anything. Like I said, we're still uh, still thinking, planning, and we definitely have to. Uh, that's what we're kind of talking about. You know, coming up on our first year, I guess. And uh, again, we're running this in addition to our our marketing company and uh, other. You know, everybody's busy doing lots of things, so uh, it's just kind of like. But we're definitely not. You know dropping the ball here. We're just we're excited and again just when if we think ah eh, we'll kinda of put that on the back burner, you know, something happens. Like Holy Guacamole reached out to us through Twitter, I think it was. So and we're kinda of talking to them. Maybe there's ways that we can team up. And then and before Christmas we did do they put us something on their Facebook page, uh, gave away some of our shirts and gear along with coupons for free guac. So 
that was a fun partnership that we're continuing to nurture. And, you know, it's just kind of, again, one day at a time, uh, right. one avocado at a time. We'll, we'll <laughs> see where it goes. Very cool. Well, this this is the Manly Pinterest Tip Show. So do you have any advice for guys who are just getting started on Pinterest? I think it just it goes with anything that you uh, get your target. You know, what's your point of being there or anywhere? What, get your target market or whatever down you know, first. Then check out, again, check out your competition once you know what you're doing or where you'll be playing and kind of what are they pinning uh, again. And it's, again, like we talked about the collaboration thing, befriend them and repin them and don't be afraid of uh, sharing other, you know, other stuff, obviously. And, um, and just set up, you know, a variety of boards that is, again, like we talked about, not just your product, um, you know, other things that make sense within your, again, your your niche or whatever. So. Very good. Well, we forgot to tease this at the beginning, but for the people who stayed with us, oh, that's right. <laughs> um, you have a special announcement you wanted to give, so why don't you go ahead and do that. Just for watchers, viewers, listeners, or whatever, wherever you are, uh, for I don't know how long we'll keep this open, so you might be listening to this on the podcast years from now, uh, but for we'll keep this some sort of link up, but just go to avocadoshirtco.com forward slash manly, and uh, you see there I set up a special page, a little more about us, how to connect on social and whatnot, and a special promo, we get a discount code uh, for whatever guac gear is in our, our store now. So fill up your shopping carts and type in manly in the promo box. And uh, we'll get some discounted but still high-quality shirt or gear out to you. <laughs> That'll be awesome. So, yeah, I'm going to make sure to put that link in there so people can uh, get to that. Um, Rob, where can, where can we find out more about you and your services? I know we've got some of the links in there, but where's the very best place to find you online? Uh, just for now, we're going to put up that link, right? AvocadoShirtCo.com forward slash manly. At the very bottom, again, I put all the Avocado Shirt Co. related links. We're trying to, you know, we're everywhere, I guess, on social. Tell us where we need to be if, we're, if I've missed something. And then below that, I just kind of put personally, I just put my a link to my Twitter and Google+. Plus. You know, we'll start there. I'm, I'm trying to ramp up, as you know, on Google+. Plus and I'm trying to be everywhere, but we'll, let's circle up there and then, or tweet, tweet me, and then, then we'll go from there. Awesome. Well, thanks, Rob, for uh, being on the show today, giving us some uh, stuff on Kickstarter and how you kind of are getting started with your visual marketing and some ideas there. We really appreciate it. Guys, I'd always love for you to go over to mainlypinterestips.com, click on the sidebar, subscribe to the email community because so you'll never miss a great, great episode like we had here today with Rob. I appreciate you guys coming because at Mainly Pinterest Tips, we're always adding testosterone one pin at a time. I'll see you next time, everybody. Thanks so much for watching. Bye now.